Hello there, today I'm going to show you how you can transform your uh, regular office PC into a multi-use uh, media server, storage server or game server. Let's get right into it. Today I have here my Dell Optiplex uh, 7040 SFF. This is the small full sort of form factor as you can see. Uh, it's equipped with a Core i5-6500, standard 8 gigs of DDR4 memory and 128 gigs of SSD storage. But I already removed the A10 and 8 gigs of storage, as you can see right here. And I put in my own uh, 32 gigs of storage because I wanted to use it as a uh, RX Survival Ascended server. Today I have a package right here. In the package, you have a, a disk drive, a 3.5 inch disk drive, 4 terabytes, and a SATA power splitter. Because actually, today I'm going to show you. How you can transform this PC into a storage server so you can store your local files on the server. I actually picked up this Dell Optiplex a couple of years ago for only 90 bucks, and my HDD cost me 110 bucks. It's from Seagate, as I'll show you in a couple of seconds, and the power splitter cable is only a couple of bucks. So, yeah, I'm going to show you the whole process of installing the HDD and actually setting it up. So, yeah, let's get straight into it. Okay, let's start off with open up the case. Uh, as you can see over here, we have a blue lid. If you pull that straight towards you, you can actually open up the PC. Let's set this aside right now. I'm actually filming this with only one hand, so this might be a little bit difficult. So here's my standard SSD, uh, obviously the CPU cooler. And it's a pretty smart case, but you, have to need, you need to remove a lot of things if, if you want to install the hard drive. So let's first of all, Take this out if I can do it with one hand. Yes. Okay, now we have a little bit more space. I actually already removed. Oh, yeah, oh no, I didn't remove, but I go through, I think I removed the optical disk drive because I don't use it and I free up another SATA data cable. But actually, let's first remove the SSD from our build. I'm actually going to be using this as a boot drive and I'm going to be using the ACD for bulk storage. I know it's not optimal because I don't have any RAID protection, so if my HD goes bad, I pretty much lose yeah, like an, the entirety of my storage or I have to recover it. But I think this is just a test build for me and I'm actually going to be upgrading it if I need more storage. So this is my first uh, storage PC and I think it's, it's a nice start for a budget. But if you want to keep your storage safe, uh, it's recommended to have another 4 terabytes or the same storage size as you the one you bought earlier. So you can set up a RAID protection, so if one drive goes bad, the other one can still save the data. But yeah, let's get uh, into it to removing the SSD. Uh, you actually need to pull over here, this is the SATA power cable, and the small one over here is the SATA data cable. Let's set these aside right now and let's put this let's, let's pull out the SSD. If you put on this tab you can actually just take it out. There you have it. I'm going to remove these four screws to place in the HD because the SSD is actually I think fitting on top of here. But yeah let's start with unboxing the three and a half inch drive. Okay so I actually uh, took off the wrapper for the hard drive and the SATA, SATA power splitter. I actually went for the uh, sorry Iron Wolf 4 terabytes. I mainly went for this drive because they are not really prone to fail, so my data will be a little bit safer, even though I'm not keeping up to the RAID uh, standards. And this is 4 terabytes, as you can see on the top. This leaves me with enough space to store my videos for YouTube, but also my videos for holidays and uh, stuff. Okay, so that was this on the hardware I'm using today. If you want to remove this cage, you actually need to pop off the front of the thing. So just pull on these blue tabs and the front will actually just come right off. Set the side right here. And then you actually have a secret, or not secret, a locking mechanism over here. If you pull off this strap, you can actually just lift out everything as a well. whole. And that actually shows you uh, the memory, I said before I installed 32 gigs of Corsair RAM, or sorry, memory for my Minecraft servers and Arc Survival Evolved Nascent servers because they are, yeah, they need a lot of RAM to run the cluster. 
but if you want to me to make another video on that, on the Arc servers, uh, just leave it down in the comments and I will yeah, try my best. Uh, okay, but let's start with removing the screws for SSD and putting in the hard drive. Okay, so I actually took off the mounting screws on the SSD and now I can actually just slot in the hard drive because if you see these little holes on the side, they should match up with the holes in your bracket right here, if you can see very closely. So yeah, I'm just going to put in the hard drive right now and just yeah, be, I'll be right back when uh, it's done. As you can see, the hard drive is actually installed and I'm now going to show you how you can pull out your disk drive. As you can see, you have a blue tab over here. If you just pull the right drawer to, it should pop right out. And you can actually take this thing right out. So I actually won't be needing this. So let's just take this right out. And I think I'm going to be storing my SSD right here. It is actually a stationary PC, so it won't be moving that much. So I think putting it right here, uh, not really secure, but it's SSD, so it doesn't really, really matter, I think. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. But I think this is a nice just storing space for the SSD, because I have the hard drive on top. Actually, before we install the hard drive into our case, uh, we need to make sure we have the right amount of cables and the right sort of cables installed. I already have my uh, SATA data cable for my SSD. This is on the zero tab because it's the fastest out of three. I also have one SATA right over here, SATA 2, and I have a SATA 1 over here. Zero is the fastest, then the one, then the two. So I'm for the hard drive, I'm going to be using the SATA 1 port. SATA power, uh, this board has a mini six pin power SATA cable, if you can see it right over here, I'll zoom in for you. So that's actually the SATA power, but it has a normal power output and a mini version. Uh, that was for the disk drive, but the hard drive obviously isn't going to support the mini power cable. So that's why I bought my splitter cable. I'm going to be installing, as I said earlier, my H, my SATA data cable, sorry, into my zero slot and my splitter cable into my power slot. So I'll be right back when I've uh, installed it. As you can see, I've actually installed my second SATA data cable and slot right here. And I have connected the splitter. And I will be now be installing this into the shield. So let's do it. I hope I can do it with one hand. Uh, you actually have little holes that the right side slots into. And then you just put this towards you and it's right into place. Okay, so now I'm going to install this back into the case, but I think I need two hands for that, so I'll be right back when I've installed it. As you can see, the hard drive is actually installed right now. Just You just need to line up those little pinholes with the cage and just line it in right through there. Actually have a locking mechanism. If I slide this to the right, you will see a pin comes out of the side right over there and actually it locks the hard drive in place so it's pretty sturdy in there okay we actually have a couple cables we need to connect right now we have the first orange I use for the hard drive data and power so as you can see I'm not really sure you can see it but there are two cable places right over there the right one is for the data the left one the big one is for the power so you actually have kind of so, you have kind of a stick on the side, and yeah, that's where you need to install it. Okay, let's just slide this in through here. Okay, so you already click, it means it's installed, and then you have your SATA power, of course. Okay, and just, just install that too right now. I don't think you'll actually be able to see anything on camera, but it's in, as you can see. And then I just put these things away because I actually don't need them. And this is actually for our uh, SSD. So let's run this through the place that our uh, disk drive was previously installed, just on the bottom of here. And it should come right out of the front. So I'll be back with you. So I actually managed to pull out those two cords. This is obviously the, the data again, the smaller one. And the bigger one is for the power. I have my SSD right here. And now we'll just connect these to the SSD. 
Okay, once again, I hope you will see it better now. Maybe if I turn it this way. Yes, as you can see, the right one, the smaller one, data, left one, big one, power. Connected the cables and installed it inside of the hard drive, or sorry, the optical drive cage. You can see it in there. Next step is to put back your cooler bracket. It only goes on one way with the big part on the left. So let me just get this on the way. Okay, uh, big part on the left. Make sure there are no cables that will be squeezed. So you can see, screen the little blue cable over there. Put it back and it should click right into place. Next up is our front cover. You have small little tabs, three of them in the front. You need to line up with the tabs over there. So one, two and three on the right. You actually can slide this right on. You hit click and it's on. And it should look like this at the moment. Just stuck the cables in, you don't need them. And just put on your black closing lid. It's pretty difficult with one hand. Put it on, slide to the right. If I can manage, click. And you can actually lock your cage if you put this towards you. You hit click and then it's not going anywhere. Okay, nice. Uh, I'm going to put this back where it belongs and I'm actually going to show you how you can set up your, how you can add your uh, hard drive you just installed into your PC and just set it up in Windows. And I'm actually going to show you how you can network share your hard drive so you can actually access it from different computers. This is my main setup. So yeah, uh, I'll be right back with you when I have actually installed the server into its place and I am actually on the home screen of the Windows machine. Okay, and as you can see we are actually now in a uh, remote desktop uh, and I'm just going to switch off to the OBS to show you the next part of the tutorial. And there's a small hint for the next video on the top left here, so stay tuned for that. On virtual desktop aka remote desktop, you want to know how to add a remote desktop to your server so you can exit it from anywhere because my server is actually downstairs and I'm here on my computer with no HDMI cable or anything, just on the Wi-Fi connected to it and it's pretty fast and responsive as you can, as you can see. I will link to a YouTube video which describes it how to set it up. Uh, yeah. So yeah, if you're interested in that, please look in the description and uh, yeah, click the YouTube link. But if you open the file uh, locator, you can see I only have my local disk C. So only my small SSD that I use for Windows. So we're actually going to be adding our hard drive to our uh, PC manually. First off, press Windows key R. This will bring up the run menu. And you actually type in disk M. GMT, so dismensed.msc. Hit OK or Enter. Show us the new disk we have installed. So just hit OK on this. And you can see we have 3726 gigabytes of allocated storage. We right click on allocated storage, sorry. Click New Simple Volume. Hit Next. Hit Next. We can assign a drive letter. So I'm just going to put S for server storage. It's like the easiest for me. Uh, click next. Volume label. You can actually give it a name here. So server storage. But I'm just going to put it in Dutch. So opslag. <laughs> because it's easier for me to see it. And just click finish. Now you actually have a healthy basic data proportion server setup. You can close out of this and you can actually see that in the uh, file explorer our hard drive is actually showing up as S drive and it's completely empty right now. So yeah, that part worked. Now I'm going to be showing you how you can actually access this from different computers on your network. So yeah, let's get right into it. And let's start by actually putting our network on private because it's the only way it will actually work. Go to settings, hit enter. I'm on Windows 10 by the way. So that might be looking a little bit older. Go to network and internet. Go to ethernet. 
connected and actually set it to private over here. Uh, otherwise it will actually not work the file sharing. Okay, next up. Go to control panel. Set it by category, network and internet. View network and sharing center. Change advanced sharing settings and actually just uh, match my settings. In Windows 11 it will look a little bit different but I will show you on my actual PC when we uh, got there uh, because that is actually when running Windows 11. Turn on network discovery, turn on automatic setup and network connected devices. Next step, turn on network discovery, turn on file and printer sharing and then use the turn on sharing so anyone with access can read and write files in public folders. They use 128 bits encoding and turn off password protected sharing. That's the only one you need to turn off, but turn on everything else. Just click save changes if you made any changes and then head out. Now we will actually share our folder. So we'll just go back into the new disk we just installed. So the 4 terabyte disk. Hit new folder. We will call it test folder. Right click on it, go to properties, sharing, share. Uh, we can actually add someone over here. So go to iedereen, it means everyone, but it's in Dutch right now. So everyone, add, you have everyone added right here. Change it to read and write. Share, and it's done. Yeah, it should be shared right now. So let's test it out. So I'm on my main PC right now. This is running Windows 11. Uh, we actually need to set up the, se the same things we did on my server PC. So go to settings. Head to the left hand corner. Network and internet. You can see it's private for me, but click on it. And set it to private again. Okay, so head back. Go into control panel. Network and internet. Again, show by category. Network and Sharing Center, Change Advanced Sharing Settings. Okay, so as you can see, it looks a little bit different than on the other PC, but it's because this is Windows 11, the other one was Windows 10. Put all of this on and check this box. Public, everything on, and the last one on 128-bit encryption, and so your data stays, I think, a little bit safer. And turn the last one off. Close this out, go to your sharing folder, go to this PC or network, sorry, and you should be able to load up your desktop. This is my desktop, it's named like this. Double click on it, test folder. As you can see, we actually have access to our test folder, so let's just add something small into there right now. So I will just add a, let's see, a tech doc, text document, test. No, let's name it different. It's like and subscribe. Oh, subscribe and build P. Subscribe. Hit enter and let's head back into our server PC. Go to our local disk and you can actually see that the text document has transferred over. So now you basically have a four terabyte uh, storage that you can use, that you can access with any PC on your network. Just need to change those quick settings in your network sharing folder. So if you're hesitant to buy a server PC, uh, please do so because it's actually really, really helpful. You can always use it to host a Plex server. That's a uh, like of kind of a Netflix, but you can add your own movies, I believe. And then you'll be able to watch them from anywhere uh, because they're run on your server. So it's really helpful. You can add a DNS ad blocking server, so you will actually be able to block your ads on your phone for example, it's really really handy. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking, subscribing and leave a comment please. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.